Welcome. Today I want to talk to you about the two most powerful functions in modern Excel, which are let and lambda. I've made a bunch of different uh, videos where I use lets and lambdas before, uh, and some where I've tried to talk about motivations for them, but today I want to kind of dive in a little more detail to, you know, if you're a person who has, a, you know, a spreadsheet with some complicated workings to figure some particular thing out, you know, lots of lots of workings and formulas and helper cells and so on. How would you and why would you want to think about converting that into a lambda using let as an intermediate step? So I'm going to kind of take it that step one is done. I, you've already, you know, you've solved a problem. You've, you've gone from inputs to outputs. Um, we're just going to think about how you do it. Uh, I'm going to walk you through how to convert it into a let as a kind of neat way to get it all into one place, but still store the logic that you get from breaking it out into lots of different cells, how to convert that into a lambda, which if you've done the let in a nice way is very easy to do, profit mostly left to your imagination, um, depending on how long this video ends up being and how self-indulgent I'm feeling, uh, I might go into some of the bigger, hairier stuff later, but uh, this is these two bits are the, the most important thing. So the, the example I'm going to be looking at here is just the, the last um, Road to Las Vegas battle. So this is a case based on a game of table soccer. Um, so the idea is that you get, you know, various different kind of starting uh, starting players. Um, so you know, whatever we start from the red goalkeeper in F20, and then we get <clears throat> a vector that they're going to kick the ball along. So here it goes, you know, ten forward and two to the left. So it'll start from here, go ten forward, gets to here, and two to the left, gets to here, um, and then. So the, these are the positions of the players, but then over here we're told which player controls each square. So in other words, if it lands on a square that isn't doesn't belong to a player, uh, which player is going to get to that? So here, uh, that's controlled by B8. And so the idea is, you know, you want to figure out if you start from R1 and you shoot this vector, what player ends up in control. And for the example, we're told it's B8. Um, and then you know, you want to do the same thing for, for other starting positions. And then where it gets kind of more interesting is where you start to do a sequence of these. So instead of just, you know, uh, one player shoots and it ends up with the second player, then that player shoots, then that player shoots, then that player shoots, then that player shoots. And, you know, if you get down to level five, then there's a string of 90 shoots. And at some point along the way, goals will be scored and the ball will reset and so on. But let's start with the simple one. And again, like I said, I, I don't want to put the emphasis on solving the problem. So I've just, I've kind of pre-built a solution here. Um, so, uh, and as part of that, I've laid out a table of you know, for each of the player's locations, what is the row number and the column number of that. Um, I'm not going to go into the details of that because, again, that's not what, what today's video is about. So all you need to know is that there's uh, a range here called player, PL, uh, a range here called row, RW, and a range here called call, CL. Uh, and we're going to, so given an input player, we're going to use XLOOKUP on those to find the row and column of that player. Then for the offset, uh, we're going to uh, we're going to use text split uh, to split this. There's a there's a space in the middle of these, so you get you know an up arrow, a certain number, uh, then a space, and then a left or right arrow, and then a certain number. So uh, if we use text split and then mid to start from character two. Uh, so we split it into the two pieces, and then starting from character two just means we ignore the arrow. So we get the ten and the two minus minus in front of that converts that to numbers. Um, and then our destination row, we just subtract off the offset because uh, if you're the red player, you're shooting up the field, which means decreasing row numbers. Um, and then for the column, slightly more complicated, but you take your starting column plus your offset, and then it's either minus one if you're going to the left, which we do by saying, do we get a number when we search for this thing in here? So if if this is in uh, the vector that we're given, then that means it's going to the left, and that means that this will give a number, and in that case, we multiply by minus one. And if uh, there's no, if this search returns an error, then is number returns false, and that gives us just multiply by one. So in other words, we're going to the right. And then once we have the row and column, we can just index on this table of who controls what on the field to get the player that it ends up with. So. How do you take, and this is not a, a super complicated thing, but how do you take, you know, all your workings here and combine it into a single formula? Well, 
the the sort of very you know naive way and the the way that gives you know big Excel formulas a bad name is to say okay this points to m96 let me just grab the formula from m96 uh, and I'll put that in there and then oops, sorry and then you know this points to n96 so let me just grab the formula from there put that in if I keep repeating this process uh, I end up with this formula so this is doing all the same as those things uh, sorry slight difference that I've done uh, instead of having a text split here, I've just uh, split it into a text before and a text after. Um, but it's doing all the same things, but it is very hard to read what this formula is doing. So I'm, I'm looking in field control, and what I'm looking for is look up this player's row, but then subtract off it. It's just like reading through it. It's super complicated. Um, and if you, if you build big Excel formulas like this, your Excel formulas will be hard to read, hard to audit. Everybody will be scared of them. There is a different way of converting all of this into one cell in a way that is much more readable, and that's using let. And let is basically a function that lets you, lets you, uh, uh, very funny, uh, that allows you to define a series of variable names just exactly like the way I would think of it is, you know, here I'm defining one variable as this. Here I'm defining another variable as this, and just like you know these things can refer to earlier um, to earlier cells in let your definitions can refer to earlier definitions. So here is that whole thing converted into a let. So we're saying let the starting player be this here, which is R1. Let the vector be this, which is this cell, and then the player row. We're just going to x look up starting player in player and row. So this formula here is exactly the same as the formula in this cell, except that we've replaced the cell reference with start player, uh, and we just define start player up here. And then same thing here. This formula is exactly the same as the formula here. Uh, this formula and this formula are exactly the same as the formulas here and here. Um, and then these ones are exactly, and so on. So it's, it's, it's mirroring exactly what's going on all over here, but two things. One is it's all happening in one cell. And the second thing is uh, you've got this sort of natural documentation. If you have, you know, reasonably readable names, you don't want super long variable names because then your formula becomes enormous. But, you know, here it's easy to read this as like player row, player column, offset row, offset column, destination row, destination column, and then next player. Um, and hence it's kind of easy enough to see what's going on. The other nice thing about this is you can just kind of get the answer from this, but it also has auditability. So if I want to just kind of double check, wait a minute, am I, or, you know, let's say it gives an answer I'm not expecting and say, okay, so I am. Before next player, show me what did it have for the destination column, column four. Okay, that looks right. What did it have for the row? It had row 10. Okay, that doesn't look right. So let's see, destination row, it's pulling off the offset row. So let's go check what the offset row is. Oh yeah, that 10, that doesn't look right. So now I'll go and look into this formula and so on. Just exactly like you would look over here and say, hmm, that doesn't look right. Uh, let's see, that bit doesn't look right. Okay, let's look over here. You can do that within the let. But the, the sort of next step from this, so I mean, you can just do this. You can take this whole big let formula, uh, copy it you know, down here, that. Uh, sorry, I'm pointing to an empty cell for R1, so let's just, this is a, a constant definition here, so just do that. Um, copy that. No, uh, sorry, I've already got it over here. Um, but I want next player, not offset row. Uh, and copy down. And that works nicely. But now we've got, you know, an enormous complicated formula in every cell. So the the nice thing to go from here is that you can then define, well, for, you can convert this into a custom function that takes a given starting player and a given vector, does all these workings to it, and ends you up with the next player. So how do you do that? Well, the, the function that makes functions in Excel is lambda. Uh, and the idea is you tell lambda, I'm going to have two inputs. That's going to be start player and vector. And then after whatever number of inputs you have, the next thing you put, which is going to be all of this, is what you do with those. 
So that's the setup for the Lambda. And then here, I'm just going to take these first two definitions out because the idea is I will later feed this a value for start player and a value for vector. So I want to take those definitions out. And by the way, setting your, um, uh, sorry, made a mess of that. Setting your let up uh, like this, where you have all your external references or constants or anything else at the start. Uh, A is great because, you know, I don't need to look down here if I need to change references. I can just change it in the first row. But B, it also is a very natural setup to turn it into a lambda because then you can just take out the first couple of definitions, make those variables for your lambda, remove them from here, and then you're golden. So that's the lambda. If you put it into a cell, it'll just give you calc uh, because it's a formula without any arguments. But then let's say we give it an argument R1 and an argument of this vector. It drops out. Sorry, I still have offset row here, so I'm returning the offset row, but I need to return next player. Uh, so now it offset, it outputs R8. But this obviously is not any better as a thing to put in here and copy on down, but now I can take all of this, everything except the arguments, copy that, and come up here. Actually, sorry, I've already done this. So uh, I've made this into a lambda called next player. So now I can just say next player of that starting player and that vector. And now it's all doing all the same thing. Uh, but now it's just kind of neatly packaged up. So my formula is super simple. Um, obviously, it requires a degree of, of kind of trust and pre, you know, either you have to trust the person who wrote the lambda or you have to kind of pre-analyze the lambda before you can look at this formula and feel comfortable. But that lets you kind of package that up quite nicely. Um, and then you can uh, you can take it and put it down here. And that is not working for, oh, sorry, yeah, because down here we're not starting from R1, we're starting from P1. Um, and then that behaves. Um, but so then the cool thing about it is when you get down here where you want to say, okay, it's, you know, we're starting from R1, but then they kick it to somewhere, a player gets control of that, they kick it to somewhere else, they kick to somewhere else, they kick to somewhere else. So you've got a series of five different players, you want to figure out where does it end up. Uh, then if you have that nice little next player lambda, you can use reduce to apply a custom function uh, to an initial value and an array. So in this case, the initial value is R1, and the array is this series of inputs. Uh, and the idea is that for each starting from R1 and the first vector, you want to apply next player to that to figure out who the next player is. Then starting from that player and the next vector, apply the, the custom function again. Starting from the output of that and the next input, you apply the custom function again, and so on. Uh, and so that kind of zips you along down to here. Um, so that's just kind of one example of the, the cool stuff that you can do once you have it in a Lambda. Uh, that's all I got for today. I am going to be uh, back later in the week because uh, I'm on ESPN on Friday uh, with eight other competitors doing a doing an interesting elimination battle format um, where one of us gets knocked out every five minutes starting from five minutes in. It's a very, very high tension format. Uh, I'm also going to put out a video with the solution to the problem from that a little while after it airs. Um, yeah, that's all I got for today. See you next time.